Hello, in this video I'm going to be talking about angles of elevation and depression. But before we get into this, let's take a quick revision on trigonometric functions. If I have a right angle triangle, that is a triangle with a 90 degree angle, then the side which is opposite to it is called the hypotenuse. The other two sides, I can just refer to them as legs. Now, if I'm talking about an angle apart from the 90 degree, then I call the side which is just opposite to it simply the opposite. So we say the side which is opposite to the 90 degree, this is the hypotenuse. The side which is opposite to the angle that I'm talking about is simply called the opposite. The side which is just next to the theta or the angle is called the adjacent side. Now, talking about basic trigonometric functions, which are sine, cosine, and tan, I can relate those to the ratio between two sides in a right angle triangle. For example, let's just start by talking about the sine function. The sine of a theta of an angle is expressed as the ratio between the opposite to the hypotenuse in the triangle. The cosine of a theta is expressed as the ratio between the adjacent side to the hypotenuse. The tan of theta is expressed as the opposite side to the adjacent side. And you can derive this because we know that tan of theta is equal to sine of theta over cosine of theta. So if you divide sine by cosine, you're gonna have the h's cancel out and you're gonna be left with O over A, which is the ratio right here. Angles of elevation and depression. If you're looking at something like above your eye level, this is the eye level, and you're looking at something above that, then the angle which is formed between the eye level and the thing which is on the top is called the angle of elevation. On the other side, if you're looking at something which is below your eye level, then the angle between the eye level and the thing which is at the bottom is called the angle of depression. Let's see, take some practical problems on angles of elevation and depression. A surveyor measures the angle of elevation of a top of a perpendicular building as 19 degrees. So we've got a perpendicular building Okay, it's perpendicular to the ground, so this is a 90 degree. And the surveyor is right here. He's measuring the angle of elevation to the top of the building. So we know that the angle of elevation is measured between the eyesight level and the thing which is on the top. So let's make a line to the top of the building. The angle between this eyesight level and the top is the angle of elevation, which is equal to 19 degrees. Then the surveyor is going to be moving to closer to the building. So here it says he moves 120 meters nearer to the building. And at that point, he finds the angle of elevation is now 47. So he was right here. He moved to closer to the building by 120 meters. Now he's measuring the angle of elevation to the top of the building. You can see it here as well. So between the eyesight and the top of the building, it appears to be equal to 47 at this instant. The question is, determine the height of the building. So we want to figure out the height of the building. And I'm just gonna label this distance X because we're gonna see we're gonna be using it. Now you can see in this figure, we've got two right angle triangles. We've got the small right angle triangle and we've got a bigger one. I'm gonna start with the smaller one to figure out the value of X first and then use it to figure out the value of H. All right, so for the first triangle, the smaller one, we can see that we can express the relationship between the opposite to the angle, which is the H, to the adjacent by a trigonometric function, which is a tan function. So tan of 47 degrees is equal to the opposite H over the adjacent X. Now what we're gonna do is a cross multiply to express all of this um, in terms of X. So I'm gonna cross multiply, I'm gonna have H 
equals to this multiplied by this, all right, so x multiplied by 10 of 47. I'm going to do exactly the same thing for the bigger triangle. So I've got 19 degrees, this is the opposite to it, and all of this is the adjacent. So tan of 19 is equal to the opposite h over 120 plus the x. I'm going to do the same thing, cross multiplication. I'm going to get h equal to this multiplied by this. So I've got 120 plus x multiplied by the tan of 19. Now you can see that these two equations, both of them, they have the h on one side. And since I'm talking about the same h, h is equal to h, it means this is equal to this. The equivalent is going to be the same. So what I'm going to do as a next step is to equate these two expressions. x tan of 47 degrees is equal to 120 plus x multiplied by tan of 19. And this is a simple equation that has only one variable, which is the x. Now to solve for x, the first thing I'm going to do is move the tan 19 to the other side. And since tan 19 is multiplied by the bracket, I move it to the other side with the inverse operation of multiplication, which is division. So I'm going to divide this right here to get x tan of 47 and divided by tan of 19 equals, on the other side, I have only 120 plus x left. Now, as a next step, I'm going to take tan of 47 over tan of 19 and plug it into the calculator and see what it is equal to. So I found out that this is equal to 3.1144. This is correct to four decimal places. Multiplied by x, this is equal to 120 plus x. Now, to solve for x, I've got to move all the x's on one side. So I'm going to move this x along with the other x. If I do this, I can have um, this. So x is going to move to the other side as a negative. Then to find the value of x to separate it, I have to take it out as a common factor. So I took x out as a common factor. What's left is 3.114 minus 1 equals to 120. Now I've got x multiplied by this bracket, which is equal to 2.1144 if you subtract 1 from it. Okay, so I've got x multiplied by 2.1144. To find the value of x, I've got to divide both sides by 2.1144. Or you can say 2.1144 is multiplied by x. I'm going to move it over to the other side as division. So if you do this, you get the value of x, which is 56.75. But that is only the value of x. They want me to determine the height of the building. So what they want is the value of x. That's easy peasy. Just go back and find an equation in H and substitute the value of X that you got in this equation. We've got two equations that have the H. I'm going to choose the short one. one. This is easier. So I'm going to choose this one. All right. Uh, I know that H is equal to X tan of 47. I'm going to plug in the value of X in here. So 56.75 multiplied by 10 of 47. This is going to give me 60.85 meters. And this is the height of the building. Let's move on to the next question. It says the angle of depression of a ship viewed at a particular instant from the top of a 75 meter vertical cliff is 30 degrees. So we've got a vertical cliff and this vertical cliff is 75 meters tall in height. And um, you've got some water and there is a ship sailing in this water. Um, you are measuring the angle of depression from the top of the cliff. So you're measuring from here. The ship is right here. You're measuring it's, it's below your eye level. That's why we call it the angle of depression. Now, the angle of depression is, remember, it's the angle between your eyesight level and that thing that you're looking at. So actually, it is this angle. This is the 30. Um, the question says, find the distance of the ship from the base of the clip at that instance. Well, this is the base of the clip, and this is the ship. So they want this distance. Well, that's a really easy question, all right? You should only know that um, since this is 30, this is going to be 30 by using alternate angles. This angle and this angle, they are alternate since you can see that they form the Z shape and they are at the corners of the Z shape. So this is going to be equal to this. Now, 
You've got the angle, you've got the opposite, you need to find the adjacent, this is the tan function. So tan of 30 is equal to the opposite, 75, over the adjacent, which is x. It's easy to solve for x by cross multiplication. You get x equals to 75 over tan of 30, which is equal to 129.9 meters. I managed to find x. I'm done with the first part of the question. Now the next part of the question says, <clears throat> the ship is sailing away. Now the ship has moved. It's sailing away from the cliff at a constant speed of one meter at one minute later. It, at one minute later, its angle of depression from the top of the cliff is 20 degrees. Now you can see that it was here. It's going to sail away. All right. Now to know what is the speed, we have to know the relationship between the speed and the distance and the time. The speed is equal to the distance over time. So to, fee to find out the speed, I have to know what is the distance, I have to know what is the time. Well, the time is given to me, they say one minute later. One minute later, it is going to move away from the cliff. The only thing I have to calculate is the distance, and then I plug them into the speed formula to be able to calculate the speed. Now let's see, it's sailing away, let's say it sailed y distance, I don't know the distance, I'm just going to call it y. Now I am going to measure the new angle of depression and it appears to be equal to 20 degrees. So let's just do this, alright, it is between the eye level and the new position of the, um, the new position of the ship. Alright. So it is equal to 20, so this angle is equal to 20, and you know since this is a Z shape, this is going to be 20 um, by alternate angles. All right, now I've got a bigger right angle triangle, which is this one, all right? I can use tan to express the ratio between two um, sides of this big triangle. So I've got the tan is equal to the opposite, which is the 75 over the adjacent, which is y plus x. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cross multiply again. All right, so I've got tan of 20 multiplied by x plus y. And at the same time, um, I am going to emphasize that I've got to substitute the value of x, which I already have here. So I just highlighted this to as a next step to substitute the value of x in this equation. So this is equal to 75. Now as a next step, um, I'm going to substitute the value of x and at the same time I'm going to get rid of 10 of 20. I'm going to move it over to the other side. Since it's multiplication, it's going to move to the other side as division. So I've got 129.9, which is the value of x, plus y equals to 75 over 10 of 20. As a next step, what I'm going to do is I'm going to isolate the y. And um, to do so, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the 129.9 over to the other side. Since it's added, I'm going to move it with the inverse operation, which is subtraction. So I'm going to have y is equal to this minus 129.9. Um, now, these are all numbers. You can plug them into the calculator to get the value of y. y is equal to 76.16 meters. I managed to get the value of y, which is the distance that the um, ship has traveled in that one minute that they're talking about. All right, now they told you that they want you to determine the speed of the ship in kilometers per hour. Well, I have this in meters, but I can convert it into kilometers. To convert it from meters into kilometer, all you have to do is to divide by a thousand. So I took the number, divided it by a thousand, I got the number, I got the distance in kilometers. Also, I've got the time, it's mentioned in the question, she traveled, the, the, the ship traveled for one minute. Now we need the final speed to be in kilometers per hour, so I need to convert the minute into hour. <clears throat> and to convert into hour, all you've got to do is divide by 60. So I took the one minute, divided it by 60, I got the time in hours. Now, all of, I've got to do is take the distance in kilometer, take the time in hour, and plug them in into the speed. Speed is equal to distance over time, 
divide those and get the speed, 4.57 kilometers per hour. <clears throat> now let's go to the final um, question on this. I've got a window <clears throat> and then from a window, which is 4.2 meters above the horizontal ground, I've got this window and it is 4.2 meters above the ground. Um, the angle of depression of the foot of a building, this is a building which is across the street, they are measuring down the angle of elevate, the angle of depression of the foot of a building from this window. So, let's just point to the window. This is the window, and I'm going to measure the angle of depression. It is between the eyesight level and the foot of the building, and it is equal to 24 as mentioned in the question. Now, using alternate angles, this is going to be equal to 24 as well. All right, then it says the angle of elevation of the top of the building is 34. So from this window, <clears throat> excuse me, I am measuring the angle um, of elevation to the top of the building. Now this is the top of the building. The angle of elevation is between the eyesight level to the top of the building and it is equal to 34 degrees. They want us to determine the width of the road, which is this, all right? And they also want us to find the height of the building. Now, the height of the building, I know a part of it. Can you see this part? I know that it's equal to 4.2. So I only need to find this part, which I'm going to call the Y. And then at the end, I just have to add 4.2 to this Y that I found to find the entire height of the building. Now, let's start with the small triangle right here. I've got a 24 angle. And I've got the opposite, and I need to find the adjacent. This is obviously the tan function. So tan over 24 is equal to 4.2 over x. I can find x by cross-multiplication. So x is going to be equal to 4.2 over tan of 24 degrees, which is equal to 9.433 meters. So I found this distance. The next step is to talk about this upper triangle. I've got the angle, which is 34 and I need to find the opposite. I have the adjacent, which is the same as the x. I've just found the x. So I know this distance, which is the same as this distance. So I'm gonna use the tan. So tan of 34 is equal to y over this distance, which is the x. I found it to be 9.433. So instead of the x, I put 9.433. To find the y, you cross multiply, you get the value of 6.36 meters. So I found the value of y. Now to find the value of h, I have to add up this distance to the y. So you've got 4.2, I add it up to the y, which is 6.36, and that is gonna give me 10.56 meters. So these are some of like the practical problems which involve angles of elevation and depression. I hope it was all clear and have a good day.